Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. A clutter coach and professional organizer, Julie also offers tips to help you get clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. I'm very excited today because we are going to be talking about all those areas. I do this series because I believe we all have gifts to share, but clutter can get in the way because clutter is literally stuck stagnant energy. And the first principle of feng shui, if you've heard of that, is to change your life is to clear the clutter. So we're going to talk about changing your life and manifesting all those things that you want in your life. And I'm super excited because today's guest guest is going to tell us about that and how clutter relates to all that. So we're going to do a different twist today on attracting and manifesting. Himo Radia is the author of Find You and You Find Everything, The Secrets to the Law of Attraction. He is a world-renowned expert on manifesting and law of attraction, a super coach, mentor, and an international speaker. Welcome, Himo. Thank you, Julie. Great to be here. We are super excited to have you. I love when we first talked, and a shout out to our mutual friend, Erin Bowers. She contacted yep. me. She said, oh my gosh, you got to have this guy on your show. So I said, all right, connect me with him. Thank you, Erin. <laughs> but let's talk about what I love about you is you're looking at clutter in a completely different way than anyone I've ever talked to. And I just think this is so important. So first, for people who are out there that might not understand, what is the law of attraction? How do you define that? Okay, uh, there's over the years there's been a lot of hype about the word law of attraction. So let me sort of clarify what it is. I mean, there's been a lot of hype. There's a lot of products, books, and I would say also be careful because there's a lot of hype out there, and it's not really uh, with anything substantial. But let me give you the definition here of, of what law of attraction is and how to make it work. Essentially. Uh, it's like attracts like, putting it very simply. So everything is an energy. You know, our thoughts are energy. Our emotions are energy. Even clutter, possessions, they're all energy basically. So like attracts like. So um, what you tend to think, what you tend to feel, you tend to attract more of the same. If you keep thinking the same thoughts, if you keep feeling the same emotions more so, that's going to build a momentum. It's going to attract more of the same. Eventually it's going to reach a critical mass and you'll get a more and more physical manifestations that reflect that. So essentially like, like attracts like. That's what law of attraction is basically. Okay, so People say that manifestation is about visualizing and creating the life that you want. But you have a, a unique take on this uh, about letting go because mm -hmm. I don't think, again, and apologize to anyone out there if I'm mistaken, but you're the first person I've known to talk about letting go because I found just in working with clients, you know, it's hard for people to let go, especially it's not just limited to physical. It's letting go of the person that hurt you 10 years ago. It's letting go of your first boyfriend's sweater. I mean, it really is in all areas of our life. Yep. And it all predominantly comes down to emotions. That's the key thing in all of this, basically. And that's what drives us, our emotions, whether things that we go towards or things that we do or don't let go, essentially. So when people tend to talk about attraction and manifesting and law of attraction, they tend to talk more about going after things or, like you said, create, you know, whether it's visualization or whatever else. And, it, and it's implied to be a creation process. My own view is that, yes, that, that is true, but it's also about allowing an, an allowing process or a letting go process. It's like you know, if your hands are holding on to something, how can you allow the next thing to come in if you're too busy holding on to something else from the past? And metaphorically speaking, in terms of clutter. So when I talk about clutter, um, similar to what you're saying, I, I talk about it as either physical, digital, emotional. I think at the end of the day, it all does come down to emotional. It, it, you know, everything, things around us are energy. And so in the, at the end of the day, it comes down to emotional. You mentioned about someone not letting go of, say, their boyfriend from years ago, etc. The reason they're not is because they've got an emotional attachment to it. Usually, People don't let go of things because they have scarcity. You know, if I if I don't let go of the, if I let go of this memory, I'll never find another. Or I won't be happy again. Or if I let go of this possession, I won't be able to attract another into my life. So they're holding on to stuff, and it's more about clinging on to stuff from a place and a principle of scarcity rather than abundance and flow. So you know, I think one thing if you want to learn more about clutter is to actually embrace the notion of abundance and flow, and to have faith that if you let something go, more will come in. Most people are actually scared of letting stuff go because they think that um, th they won't be okay without it. So it's, it's about having faith in yourself and the universe that you will be okay. 
I want to talk for a moment. Would you say that it all boils down to scarcity? Or does it boil down maybe to I'm not good enough or I don't deserve? Or would you say in your practice and assisting people that it's mainly scarcity? Yeah, it's all it's all interconnected. It's all I mean, if you if you if we get to the common derivative, it's actually fear, really, if you think about it. So scarcity is from fear that I won't be I won't have enough there won't be another it won't be okay I won't be happy again uh, if I let go of this possession I can't attract more money money is hard to come by and if you keep asking behind that you, you end up with scarcity and, and fear so it's, it's fear at the end of the day do you think that that's something I mean I think when we're born obviously I'm sure you'd probably agree with this we're perfect we don't have any issues and then life happens have you <laughs> found that it, it seems to be it's something within the family that people learn or is it societal or a combination of, of all of that? Yeah, it could be anywhere. It could be um, growing up and in school and p people the way people treat them in school, for example. It could be parents. It could be, I think at the end of the day, we have to take responsibility. These are our beliefs and our notions. You know, we may grow up in a certain society, a certain family. You know, we may be in an underprivileged family, but we've got to then take responsibility for our beliefs and, uh, and behaviors and emotions. And that's what we're here for, to help highlight to people and illuminate, people can be, uh, become aware of this stuff and they, they can address it, they can take responsibility rather than being at the victim of things that happened 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years ago. I, I love that you talk about that and I, I definitely want to talk about this a little more because I believe we create our life as I'm sure you would agree with me but so many people, oh, no, life happens to me and they don't own it, they don't take responsibility and they wonder why it doesn't change. Yeah, I think uh, if someone is listening to this or watching this and that's where they're from, I would say, well, why don't you pretend that you're responsible? Well, let's, let's use another word. Let's just pretend you're at control or in, in charge of your life. Okay. Sometimes people, for, for people, some people, responsibility implies blame and fault, and that's not what we're getting at. We're saying because if you can't take um, uh, responsibility or you can't be at cause for things, then you can't change it essentially. <laughs> so um, let's pretend that in fact everything around you, even despite what, whatever beliefs you've grown up with, what if you're actually influencing everything that's happening around you? Whether it's true or not, let's just pretend. Let's play on that belief. Let's just uh, wear that belief for a moment and pretend we're having that and then see what how your perspective changes. So just pretend and take it on board. <laughs> What um, would you say that most people, since you work with a lot of people, and I know you've written books and have followers, are people even aware of their thoughts, or, or is that something that you have to help them in the beginning? Say, okay, you have scarcity thoughts because they might not, but might start here, but have to come to this realization. Oh, wow, that's truly what I'm thinking. That's a really great question. That's a really great question because. It's exactly what you said there, that people are actually unconscious of their thoughts. So they tend to have these thoughts, but they're so habitual now, they're so used to having these thoughts for years, several years, 10 years, 20 years, that that's just a part of who they are. So whether it be about money, whether it be about relationships, men, women, whatever else, um, whether it's thoughts of scarcity, fear, they're just so habitual, these thoughts, that, that they, think, they think these thoughts without even thinking twice about them, basically. Mm -hmm. So when they think about money, they think of maybe, can I pay my bills at the end of the week? Do I have enough? And so these are, these are all thoughts that are tinged with fear or scarcity or anxiety. So when people say, why am I not attracting the things that I want? Uh, you know, I'm practicing the visualization, I'm doing all this stuff, uh, and, and so on and so on. It's actually because they have thoughts that are outside of their conscious awareness that they're not aware of. And that's a lot of the work that I do. And I actually say this, that I'm ha helping people to become consciously aware of the thoughts they're having. They're just outside of conscious awareness. So people do do these things to themselves without actually realizing it, yes. <laughs> I want to talk briefly about The Secret. Now, I first saw it, I'm, I'm kind of behind the times, so I just saw it probably, my husband and I sat down and watched it maybe three or four months ago. He's like, well, let's watch this. So I was like, if he wants to watch something spiritual, we're going to watch it. But I think that, you know, it had great success, I believe, all over the world, uh, book and film, but a lot of people, they haven't changed. So would you say that there's something missing or people weren't be able to weren't able to become consciously aware of what's going on? I, I feel like there's a piece missing. Does that make I sense? Agree. I totally agree with you. That that's that's always been my view as well. Um, whilst I think it was around 2006 when it came out, whilst it was useful in increasing the awareness of this type of uh, 
uh, concept, the law of attraction, or creating your reality. So I think it was great in increasing the awareness. It's inspirational. It's colourful. If you're watching the the DVD, etc. My view is though it doesn't really go into enough of, of the how or the spiritual side. It focuses also a lot on the action. And my view is actually it's not just action. It's the energy side of things as well. If your energy is aligned, then the actions will flow naturally. It'll be more inspirational rather than forcing actions. Because you could be someone that does all the actions, but things don't happen. Because if you know if you're not quite lined up to it, things will start keep evading. You. So it's also about energy as well. So my view is that it was useful. The secret was useful in, in when it came out, increasing the awareness. Uh, but there is so much more, especially energetically and spiritually. And that's also what we're talking about here in terms of you know we're talking about fear, we're talking about clearing energy, we're talking about clearing clutter. For me, that's actually more important than than all the other stuff really. I want to talk a little bit, and this might tell you a lot about me and and maybe where where I struggle. But my also my issue with the secret is I felt the emphasis was too much on material possessions and so kind of what I struggle with and wonder with is there a balance like for instance in my life I want to be comfortable my goal is financial freedom so that I can spend time with my family or if I'd like to travel somewhere I, one house is fine one car for me is fine I don't need an abundance and I, I really mm. I'm trying to to be come up as an observation and neutral because I wonder is there within all this manifestation a law of attraction is there too much and at the same time I mean I have I'd say probably I have a lot of things compared to a lot of people have a lot more but you know I had someone say to me you have so much and you know I'm someone who I clear out everything once a year I'm very on top of that so I would love your thoughts about that is there too much or does a law of creation not think of it that way talk a little bit about that Okay, there's many different things we can say. First of all, I mean, um, perhaps uh, the secret was made to a certain audience. I mean, I guess it was very well marketed, and I'm sure they were aware of also a certain target audience as well, potentially, and what they were looking for, because a lot of people are looking to manifest uh, money, material things, their ex partner, etc., etc. So maybe it was oriented around that, possibly. In terms of manifestation and is there too much, etc., my own view is it's actually more about the individual in terms of their own evolution. So, you know, you have people that are more materially oriented, maybe they get to a phase in their life when they think, actually, I've either got enough now or I don't have enough now, but it's actually not that important anymore. Now my family is more important to me, or the community is more important, or the world is more important. So, it's, for me, it's actually more about evolution and people than about law of attraction or manifesting, that's just a tool for people's own evolution for where, wherever they're at. So that's what I would say. In terms of whether can people have too much, my own view is no, it's an abundant universe and you know the, you, you are an aspect of the universe and the universe expands through you. So through, as you create, the universe expands. You know, many um, decades ago we had um, corporations and then we had pollution and environmental stuff, so that was a new contrast, that was a new desire for the universe. Okay, so now we've got to be environmentally friendly. So we've got the next phase and so on and so on. So everything leads to something else. So everything is useful. You know, it's all part of the evolution. So I think there's no limit there. You know, if we cause damage, then we then we have to then focus on the, the, the remedy and the solution of it. So that's part of the evolution of ourselves and, and the planet itself. Well, wow, well said. I like that because I think that's true. Just talking about myself personally, I think I wanted more when I was younger, but as I've gotten older, my priorities have changed. And, you know, I think also an influential factor for me is uh, when I did professional organizing work, when I would go to homes that had so much and it was just so clutter, it would literally physically overwhelm me because it was just so much. And, and you know, every time I'd walk away from a job, I, you know, was like, I, I never want to get to that point. Um, but, you know, I'd like to talk a second about, because um, this, I think, will tie in and letting go. I believe if something brings you joy, then it's not clutter. For instance, I love to bake and cook. That's how I show love. I like to bake things for people. So I probably have more baking things than the average person, but they're used. I love them. They create love, so it's not clutter. Yeah, and you're also using the energy, aren't you? I guess it's not it's not uh, energy that's just sitting there. And I guess um, I'm not sure the specific definition of cluster is, but I guess if something if you've not used it for a while, maybe that's telling you something. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So for you, you made an interesting point earlier that I never thought of until you stated this. That really, you said physical, digital, emotional. That in your mm -hmm. mind, everything clutter really boils down to emotional. 
Yeah, and uh, I mean, when I do my group calls, I tend to mention it's physical, emotional, digital, or, or whatever else. But I think for me, it comes down to it all ties in with emotional and, and energy, basically. We were saying a moment ago, you were saying about the baking, etc., and I said, well, but you're utilizing it, so it's not just energy that's sitting there. Um, another way I'd put it to people is, let's put it this way. The cluster that you have around you, that's energy that's not in flow. So imagine if you release that, you, you know, it's like if you didn't, you know, if, if there are elements of your body that you weren't using and not in flow, that's then taking energy away from the whole, from everything else. It's the same with your physical environment and, and your life. And it's not just, um, you know, it's not just physical, emotional and digital, like I said, but it's also things that are incomplete in your life. That's trapped energy. The fact that every day you're thinking about that thing that you've not done. I mean, I worked with a client yesterday who was talking about, I'm helping her work on, I think, her second book. She's writing a book, but she's not been getting around to doing it. So she said to me, Hemel, um, you know, the other day I really meant to start writing my book, but I, I cleared out my cupboards and so on and so on, and I thought that would help me. I said, yes, they, they probably did, but also realize this task of writing your book, that in itself is also energy. That's trapped energy that's not moving on until you actually get on with it. So yes, whilst in, in a way I think she was distracting herself from actually writing her book by clearing things out, but I then turned it around and said, well actually the, the very task itself is also clutter, so the way you can clear that is actually by moving on forward with it. So oftentimes things that we've not resolved, you know, whether we wanted to call someone, you know, whether you're thinking about a situation that you've not resolved, you know, we talked about p the past or whatever, that's all energy, that's trapped energy, that's if you want to say clutter, it's, it's emotional, it's energy, so anything that's incomplete in your life, whether it's a task, whether it's a resolution on something, whether you think about something or you feel guilty about something or fearful about something of the future, that's still trapped energy, which when you release, my own experience is when you let go of this stuff, manifest manifestations happen by themselves. So you don't need to force things, you don't need to chase things. When you let, I mean, I've, I've had experiences where I've cleared things away, whether it's tidying out emails or clearing out a shed or whatever else, and, and I've had manifestations happen. It might be people getting back in touch, clients getting in touch with me, and so on and so on. So literally, without even chasing stuff, I've let go of things and they found me, so to speak. <laughs> That, wow, I'm having such an aha moment on that. I mean, that's a really, I've never thought of it that way before about incomplete events. I mean, gee, now I want to talk about, as you're talking about the writer that you were helping yesterday, I mean, the, really, that's a, that's a really a fabulous, I'm going to have to read your book now because obviously there are about <laughs> a thousand things I need to learn. But let's talk a moment about procrastination because I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with and now with you're having me look at that from a different perspective that's stuck that's clutter so let's what what yeah. do you think going on with there because I think that's a common problem I mean, and I consider myself a pretty motivated person but there's still areas where I procrastinate so if someone's if someone's says, okay, I'm not getting this task or thing done, what, what suggestions do you have? I would say, well, first of all, question your motivation or your energy around it. Do you really want to do it? You know, is it something that's really from the heart? Is it something, or is it something that you're convincing yourself or other people telling you that you should do? So look into the energy of why you want to do it, the, the intention. Secondly, if that's good and you're not doing it, so you realize actually this is, this is something that I need to do and it is important, but I'm still not getting it done, then look at distractions. You know, are you distracting yourself with other things? Do you have some uh, beliefs or thoughts that are enabling to do it. So uh, I can't do it because, I, I mean, the example of the writer was that she had children, etc. Uh, and I said, well, okay, that's fine. You do have children, but prioritize, organize. You can still get things done. So, you know, what are the distractions? You know, and sometimes it might not actually be things that are taking your attention. It might, be, it might just be things that you're focusing on in your own mind rather than actually tasks that you need to do. So this is where we go back to about trapped energy in terms of the things that we think. Um, you know, is there a conflict? Are you pondering about an argument you had a few days ago or whatever? Is that what's taking your attention? So so, so your, your mind is somewhere else, so you're not actually, then the energy is not flowing to what you need to do. So this is the whole principle of what you and I are talking about, which is when you clear the clutter, you're freeing up all this energy, whether it be in possessions, in emotions, in complete tasks, that energy is then available for you to channel, whereas if that energy is trapped on other things, there's only a certain select amount of it available for you to use, basically. Okay, well, I'm wondering, this is, wow, I'm having an aha moment, because I am, I had something happen, and I'm wasting too much energy, and you really... Or putting it in my face now, but I'm not procrastinating on it in the sense I don't know how to solve it. Like I feel really stuck. So is okay. there maybe an exercise? I know you. I want at the end to tell your website, and I know you have free downloadables. But is there perhaps an exercise you could share with us that maybe helps with this or something out that might? Uh, okay. So something that you'd like to get done, but you don't have the solution for it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I would say then. 
have you defined or even just set the intention that okay I don't have the solution for this but I'd like to have the solution for it so just start with an intention then so that's in, in the sense what you really want to do is you want to get to a good energetic place with your situation so let's say for example let's say someone says they've got an ex and they've both moved on with their lives but there's stuff unresolved and they say but I don't know how to solve it him and I aren't in touch so I would say well have an intention in your mind that this will be resolved one way or the other so what might happen is he might get back in touch and you resolve it or you may come across a concept or an idea that helps you resolve it within yourself. So if you don't have the solution, you're then putting the intention out that I'd like to have a solution. I'd like I'd like to you you're cleaning up your energy about having a solution. Whereas if part of you is going, I don't have a solution, how do I solve it? That's a mixed energy and the universe reinforces that back. Oh wow. Thank you. Well first of all that that's just amazing. And what I love about that, everyone can do that. Yeah. It's very simple. Yeah. 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 It's not brain surgery. It's wow. like when, some, when someone's wanting to create something in their lives, let's say they want to change career or change job or, or they're in a stuck situation, whether a relationship or whatever, it's like, I don't know what to do, I'm stuck and I'm bewildered. Okay, well, set the intention that I'd like to get some answers. That's it. Simple as that. So keep the energy clean uh, and then go from there. Then you attract more of the same. You know, w with them, whether it's law of attraction or manifesting, the way to do it is, is you've got to have your energy clean about it in the sense of say something very softly and gently that you're congruent about. And that's the key word here, you're congruent. So so I will resolve this, or I'll find a way. I may not know have I may not have the answers. I may have so many obstacles and challenges, but I'll find the solution. It'll come to me. Either I'll find it, or the universe will send it to me, and I let go, and I let it appear. That word again, let go. <laughs> right. Wow. That's just a real because think now I because I'm thinking oh, I don't have a ton of clutter in my life, but you are pointing out where my clutter is. So I'm very <laughs> grateful, very grateful for that. Now let's switch gears for a moment because. I think this is a really outstanding uh, thing to let people know about. How do allowing and letting go tie in with ego and fear? Right, okay. So, I mean, the way I, I mean, ego is a, is a word that's used in many contexts and in different ways. So let me define how I mean that. For me, you know, ego is really... Um, Judgmental. It's when you have when you when you're labeling things in a way that's. Uh, I mean, we always have to label things to get through life anyway. So we're always going to have to label things. You know, apple, car, orange. So, but it's when you label things in a judgmental way that are taking you out of your flow. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So you know, when you question yourself, when you don't value yourself enough, or you value yourself too much, shall we say, in in a in a, in a way that you're sort of um, out of your flow, shall we say. So. Um, Fear, ego, allowing, letting go. So, okay, let's go back to le letting go and allowing and going back to what we said at the start, which is my view is that the way to manifest and create things is actually about creating space to allow them to come in. You're natural manifestors. Uh, you know how to create this stuff. It's not about chasing things or visualizing. In fact, when someone visualizes something or does a vision board or any process, what they're doing is they create, they're furthering that energy in their psyche to allow that to come in. But similarly, you can free up some energy and that will automatically create the space anyway for that to come in. So, so um, sometimes for you to create something and manifest something, and you, uh, when you um, visualize, you're then, um, in a sense, you're pushing out the things that you haven't been clearing, so to speak. So you're, you're, you're dominating your consciousness with the things that you'd like to attract. Um, it's far easier, I think, and uh, to actually let go of the things that you're uh, not complete on the, the 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 possessions, the clutter. So let me let me simplify that. Basically, it's easier to let go of things uh, and to create that space. The universe works far more easily than having to force something. I mean, literally, um, literally, you can let go of things, and like I said, things happen automatically. So for me, it's actually about allowing, it's about letting go of stuff. Um, you know, if you ask yourself, if I think of what I want right now, how do I feel about it? What gets in the way? So, for example, using the example you shared a moment ago, you said I'd, there's a situation I'd like to solve, but I don't know how to solve it. So, but I don't know how to solve it was the block there. So we said let, let go of that block, let go of that block. So we let go of that energy, and it you know, it, 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 we allowed the solution to appear. So we didn't add anything to, I didn't give you any specific answers to your solution because I don't know the content of it, but we just looked at the structure of it that you actually block, how, you had a block in the way, an energetic block. So what we said was, okay, let's just focus on what is it that you really want and let go of the block. So it's really about allowing things, about letting go of stuff. Um, when we hold on to fears, when we hold on to guilt, anger, emotions, unresolved stuff, it takes energy to hold on to stuff. If you're in a situation, whether it's an employer or a relationship that's not healthy, if you're tolerating things in your life, that takes energy basically. So, And that's all energy that can go towards you being happy, you creating things or naturally manifesting things in your life, um, attracting other situations. So if you're tolerating things, if you're holding on to fear, um, it's, it's taking up energy. So it's actually about letting go of that stuff. If you let go... 
the thing to also say to yourself is, why is this really important? So, you know, the stuff that you're holding on to, why, why am I holding on to it? Why am I clinging on to it? Why do I have to prove myself to others? Why do I have to do this? So, because you're then taking part in the ego, the ego dance, shall we say, you know, to have to prove yourself, to earn enough money for this, or to show that you're earning enough money, or to have the nice car or the nice house. You know, have the nice car and the nice house because you're congruent with it, not because you're trying to show something, which is more of a superficial, it's a bit more of an egoic thing, which takes up energy, which is not in alignment with your true, true essence. So it's, it's really about letting go of all that stuff. And, uh, and as you let go of it, you then allow space for new things to come in. I think you hit on the head what I was trying to articulate earlier and couldn't, that I see more of like having five houses as coming from an ego standpoint than, you know, a functional standpoint or a place from the heart. So I, I thank you for distinguishing that. Uh, and I had another thought and I lost it. Um, have you found that, how long does this process take when you work with someone? I mean, if you're yeah, I'm in my 40s, and if you've been having these thoughts for 40 years, have you found that, boom, it can switch like that, or that it takes some process to do some digging to really get down to be able to clear it out? Everyone's individual because of, you know, your own background, etc. I mean, when we were talking earlier about letting go of energy and so on, um, what I was going to say is it's also about um, the intensity of the emotion and how intense you have it as well. You know, the more intense something is, the more energy it takes up. But in terms of how quickly it can go, it doesn't, just because something is intense doesn't mean it has to take long to, for it to move on. It's all about perspective. You know, the, the reason and the way that we evolve is we change perspective. We change, you know, the, the reason we feel differently about a situation is because we see it differently or we have a new uh, new opinion on it, basically. So, and that's what shifts things. So, so in terms of how quickly things can happen, it's really about as quick as you can change your mind, <laughs> as as quickly as you can shift how you see a situation. So that's down to us as individuals. So it doesn't need to take long. I mean, I've worked with people, and things can happen very, very quickly, basically. But it's down to us. It's just like in this conversation, we've shared many insights, which for many people they may not have been aware of, and there may have been some profound changes that have occurred even just as a result of this. So. Things can happen quickly. It's just down to us and how quickly we allow ourselves to shift as well. I that now that you say that, I got married last fall, and I think since meeting my husband, we met and we got married within. Thank you. We got married within after meeting within less than a year, and it happened pretty quickly. But I've noticed right. that my tolerance level in the past I would have stayed with friends or business relationships that pay, maybe weren't were draining would probably be the best way or that just there was more give and, as opposed to a more equal relationship and since marrying him I'm just like oh like no just like it's okay I'm gonna let it go whereas in the past I would have well can I change it can I stick it out blah 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 right <laughs> right and look, you've got something more meaningful as well the, the, the motivation behind all this is far more grander as well a love relationship as well now, do you uh, feel that clutter is symbolic of something? Yes, that's, that's, that's a good question because um, as within, as without, as they say, so it's like, you know, what, what, if someone's finding it troublesome to let go of something, then say, well, what does this represent, uh, what, what, does, what does this represent to me? Um, you know, if you're finding, let's say, some clothing, some dresses or some trousers or shirts or whatever you're not letting go of, why? You know, does it remind you of a phase of your life? So what is it symbolic of? And so, in a sense, then you can say to yourself, well, what is it that I need to have within myself so then I don't need to have it on the outside? That, and that's the way to true manifesting, is actually finding it on the inside. You know, too often people are chasing stuff on the outside to feel better on the inside. But the, the, the secret to manifesting is actually get it on the inside, and it won't actually matter whether you have it on the outside or not, but in likelihood it'll, it'll show up anyway then. But then, because you have it within you, it doesn't really matter anyway. So... It's, it's asking yourself, what is this symbolic of? Um, I remember years ago when I realized, okay, I need to tidy out these emails, I realized like some emails I was holding on to, and I said, what's the belief or the viewpoint I'm having that's making me keep these and not let them go? And it came down to scarcity. It was like, okay, maybe there's some information here. Maybe there's going to be an offer or something that I can use, or, or maybe one day I'll use what's in here. And so, and of course, in likelihood, I never, I never followed up on those, and, and we, we never do sort of thing. So I... I realized that and I said to myself, okay, it's about scarcity and abundance. So if I'm truly aligned to my source, to my, to whatever I believe in, then it'll show up itself. It'll show, show up wherever. If, if I let go of this email, that's okay. The opportunity will show up somewhere else in some other way. It's not about this email. So it's about letting go of stuff. You know, what, 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 um, notice the things that you have around you. Is it emotional clutter? You know, are you someone that has friendships or relationships and then you feel guilty afterwards or you question whether you're going to have another nicer friend or another nicer relationship? So 
notice if there's a pattern to your emotional clutter. You know, is it about fear? Is it about anxiety? Is it about not being good enough? Is it about guilt, feeling guilty? So, so notice if you know, that's symbolic of, of part of your personality in terms of, you know, do you give yourself a hard time? Um, you know, so what are the patterns? What are the characteristics? So, so use the patterns of your clutter to give you an awareness of yourself. You know, what are you holding on to? Is it more material oriented? Is it about, is it symbolic of relationships? Is it about health related? So what is it? So let it, let it give you an awareness of yourself so you can make shifts and, and things change in your life. That's amazing. I keep having these aha moments. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm about to fall over because <laughs> I was thinking in my work, because for the most part, I've said, oh, I've been good with clutter. I've got a lot of work to do. But in my work, I would hold on to emails. And as you were speaking, I'm like, oh, you were holding on to them for fear they were going to come back and say, oh, this was wrong or you didn't do this. And that that's why you're holding on and realizing, no, you did your job and you did it well. But that's. Also, yep. Sorry. Also realize that what you just said that you're, so you're holding on to it for reasons of fear, not of flow. <laughs> realize that. So realize holding on to your clutter for reasons of fear or flow. And if you're holding on to reasons of fear, that fear is trapped around you then. And that's what you're reflecting to the universe. So you know, if you're holding on to stuff for fear, you're in a sense saying to the universe, I value fear and I'm holding on to it. So let me attract more of the same. <laughs> Wow. Okay, I got some email cleaning up to do after our, our interview here, but gosh, that's such a great insight. Do you find that um, some regular practice such as meditation might help? Because I think, it's, if I'm understanding you correctly, it's ego getting in the way a lot of the times, uh, you know, saying there's scarcity, there's abundance, because our true essence would know, no, there's not, that's not how it is. So to something like meditation or a regular practice, what do you suggest to people to be able to hear our true essence as opposed to our ego? Well, in your case, it sounds like baking. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> um, it's following you, know, following what you really enjoy. Um, for some people, maybe meditation would help in terms of clearing their mind. For me, what I like to do is I might get a piece of paper and I'll write down what I've been thinking that day, where have my thoughts been going, and then I'll sort of dismantle, okay, I'll, that, why am I thinking that, why do I need to think that, let me let that go, what, what do I want to think of instead, so that's kind of how I do it, some people may like to quieten their mind, and as they quieten their inner dialogue, it, it quietens the chatter, and so then they feel that flow within themselves, um, but another way is really ask yourself, what do you what do you really enjoy in your life? So whether it's whatever it, whether it's baking, whether it's playing with kittens or puppies, or um, you know, w w writing a book or playing some music or g walking in the park, you know, what is it that takes you in, in, in connection with your true essence? So th that's what I would say. Focus on what your true essence is and th let that grow. As that as that grows, it it magnifies. As you start to get more in tune with that, you'll then be selective. It's kind of like when someone goes on a, on a natural, a healthy diet, and they do that for 30 or 60 days. Afterwards, they're very sensitive to food that is healthy or unhealthy at that point. So similarly, as you get into your essence more and you make that more aware of your life, you're going to become conscious of it and more sensitive to it and things that aren't in alignment with it, and you can step away from those. Sometimes what happens for some people is that they've lived lives, lives for many years and many decades where they've had noise and clutter and things that are out of alignment with themselves. And just by habit, you know, maybe they're in a relationship where someone's not being supportive of them and that's just the way they think things should be. And so they've kind of become used to it. And so it's almost like they've created walls to actually get in tune with themselves. They're not, they almost don't recognize their own voice nowadays. So it's getting in tune with yourself more and then stepping away from this and, and following the light more and more. Now, what would you say to someone? I mean, I've had so many aha moments, and you've such great, and for me, new information here. But someone might be watching or watch later, and they're saying, you know what? It's all good and dandy, but I'm in the middle of a divorce. I just lost my love, my job. I'm really struggling. I'm in one of those dark moments. What advice mm -hmm. would you have for them? Okay, so it ties in similar. To I think the question that you, you shared earlier about the situation you were mentioning. So let's say someone says they're going through a divorce or they're about to lose their job. So right now. I may not know my answers, but how about like, okay, I want to go through this divorce, but I want to go through it smoothly and easily, or, or I want to, I'm going to lose my job, but I want the next branch to appear for me, whatever it may be, whether it's me setting up my own business or getting another job. So start with an intention. You know, what would I like? And then, so just by stating that intention, usually it's quite soft. We don't have many uh, blocks about it because we state it quite generally. Uh, but when we get specific, sometimes we have a lot of um, things that get in the way because if we say, well, I want to have a job that's earning 50 grand or 100 grand, we may have some beliefs that get in the way. So let's just start with something general like, well, I'd like to attract a better situation, whether it's self-employment or a new job. I'd like to attract, or I'd like to 
smoothly move out of this relationship, this divorce, and attract a better life for myself later on down the line, and so on and so on. So state an intention. When One way to become sensitive of your clutter is to say, okay, well, what is it that I would really like in my life? So whether you're going through these situations or not, what is it that you'd really like in your life? So you might define a situation, whether, you know, whether it's a relationship situation or a, a business thing. As you do that, uh, ask yourself, if I have it in my life right now, what, what, how do I feel about it? You'll often get a clue as to your clutter when you do that. I'll give an example. Um, a couple of years ago, I did a radio show, and... Um, it was about relationships, and this woman rang in, uh, she was in the US, and she asked a question saying, um, well, I've been doing all this visualization, etc., um, but I, I, um, I'm, I don't, nothing's been coming into my life. And I said, well, what have, you been, um, what have you been visualizing or working on? And she said, well, I'm working on visualizing a man that's attractive and I'm, I'm happy I'm in a relationship with. And it was very general, the, way, the terms she used. And I said, well, why is it so general? Why don't you get a little bit more specific? And she said, well, I don't want to limit my options. And I said, that's, so this is the thing. I said, well, get the, this is the thing when you define what you want. Get specific in that it excites you, but it doesn't have to be that it's just that scenario. So, for example, I said, if you said you're going to attract a, a brown-haired guy, for example, that you're attracted to, and it makes you feel good, that's flowing your energy in that moment. That's fine. But it can be a, a brown-haired guy, a, a, blue, a, a blonde guy, guy, etc., etc., it's, it's pretty open how it comes to you. The key thing is, as you get specific, the energy flows more and more. Um, and I said to her, so let's say now you have a relationship, okay, what if a guy was ready to move in with you, or you were ready to move in with him ha tomorrow, how would you feel? And she said, oh, um, ah, she goes, I know what I need to work on. I, I've I've been through a divorce, and there's still some emotional stuff I need to deal with. So, so for her, she'd been doing all this stuff. So it goes back to what we said earlier. People can try and create stuff, but if they're not under, underneath all that, if they're not fully, if they don't have the space for it, they're going to, whether sabotage is the right word, but they're going to be conflicting. So you know, if part of, them is trying to, part of them is trying to visualize something, but on, on another level, they're not quite ready for it, it's not going to come in, basically. So ask yourself, you know, if I have the relationship I want tomorrow, or if I have the job that I want tomorrow, what comes up? So someone might say, well, if I get the job tomorrow, it feels scary, I don't feel good enough, I don't feel ready. Okay, so you have beliefs about not being good enough. So what I would say is imagine, think of what you want, and what if you have it t today or tomorrow, how does it feel? What comes up within you? And write down whatever comes up and be really sent to the smallest of thoughts because that's how subtle it can be. So make a note of them and work through them. That's, that's the class that you need to address. It could be beliefs. It could be emotions. Wow, that's great. I have one. Uh, I'd like to comment on that true story. So I had made a list like that. And mm -hmm. I had, um, like, integrity, kind-heartedness, and really my husband is everything on the list. Well, he is an inch shorter than I am. And on my, uh, on my list, I had, like, between six foot, six foot three. I took it off, and two weeks later, I met my husband. True story. Lovely. <laughs> Very nice. And yeah. you're happy, though. Yeah, the, the inch didn't make a difference, did it? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, gosh, no. I mean, I, I couldn't. He was so worth the wait. He was so amazing. But I just want to reinforce what you shared. Right. And that's the thing. It's like letting go of sometimes the details. Like someone will say, but what if he or she is a bit different? Well, make, make what you want so appealing that it doesn't matter then. Some of the details won't matter. And this is what we talk about when we talk about ego. And, and uh, so what I mean by that is judgment. You know, you, I mean, whether someone's an inch or short or taller, I mean, it, it, you know, let's not put emphasis to it. You know, there might be other values that flow your spirit so much that, so, that some of those, that those other descriptions don't matter, basically. Whether someone's a certain hair color or certain, whether they're from a certain country or speak a certain language or whatever else. Um, you know, make your dreams so big, so compelling that some of these details won't matter. I think when we um we, we talked about symbolism earlier, and you were asking about is uh, is clutter symbolic? The goals that we set, um, and I mentioned this in my book, that they're really symbolic representations. So when you st when you define a goal, that's actually emitting a frequency in res uh, in in resonance with with your goal. So what you define in your mind is not actually not necessarily exactly the thing that you're attracting. It's a similar signal to what you're attracting, and so that's what happens. You put out a similar signal, and you attract something very similar energetically. So that's why sometimes things, things can vary, and sometimes it can be so worth it because you find something so much more compelling than, than what you first thought. What I would love for you, because in several instances we've talked about and you shared, it boils down to the emotion and a blockage there. So do you have any advice for people on how to let go of those blockages or shift that energy? 
So I think the first thing is what we said earlier is, is becoming aware of it. And like I said, we can go through life and not be aware of it. People carry guilt and fear and aren't conscious of it because it's so habitual or they don't think about it or they think that's just how they need to be now and they don't. So um, it's kind of like, you know, when you... Um, when you start out life all fresh like a baby with little things to, a few things to hang on emotionally, that's how you want to be. You want to be in that fresh place. You know, life is meant for living, and the, when we don't feel life flow through us, it's because energetically we're blocking it in some way, and that's unto our emotions. Whether we feel we're not good enough, we're scared, we're anxious, angry, etc., etc. Um, become aware of it. And one way is, you know, wh what am I wanting in my life? Where am I wanting to go? Um, what's getting in the way and also you can just quieten your mind and say well what do I think about predominantly on a daily basis you know am I sad about my life am I angry am I so you know, what goes through your mind on a regular basis and that's what you will attract more of so um, so first of all become conscious of it and then question it so this is um, you know we can give processes etc but this is just one way of handling it which, which is first of all become conscious quieten your mind and say well what do I think about on a daily basis am I am I complaining about the economy am I complaining about my friends you know it's like let's say someone saying um, a woman saying that she wants to be in a relationship uh, you know she's telling all her friends that you know I want to meet a guy and be happily uh, in a relationship but then off often she's also talking about how badly her exes were and how men are so terrible and so on and so on so she's sending out mixed signals and so why are you doing that Oh, because I'm angry with my exes. Okay, so you're carrying anger. So let's let let's let go of that. Because if you're carrying anger, you're like in likelihood you're going to attract more of the same um, in in your experience in life in general. So um, so become conscious of it and start you know, start to realize what's going through you. That's that that's a key thing because like I said, we become quite instinctive and we don't realize the things that are going through us. The fact that we get angry, the fact we get guilty or whatever else. So just write it down and then question it. Why why am I feeling guilty for something that happened so many years ago? What's to feel guilty? And then turn it around and say, well actually, what if I should actually be so non guilty about this or unguilty about it? Turn it you know, so in a sense you're flipping a belief around to the opposite. And that can often like, often blow out people's um, beliefs and perspectives when you take the opposite stance. You know, maybe I should actually be grateful rather than feeling gu guilty for the way it worked out. So you know, that that's why people talk about gratitude because that's such a high uh, vibration. So it's like, how can you how can you be thankful for the way things are? That way, you're moving further away from the uh, the disenchantment for, of what happened. And so, so I would say, become conscious and then turn it around. Become conscious of it, identify it turn it around to something far far better that supports you. You are where you need to be and everything you need is here and now. Everything is the way that it should be. Everything's worked out. It might, have, might not have appeared perfect but it's what it needed to be. You know, if let's say you hurt someone else but they were an energetic match to that dynamic. You know, that's the, just the way it worked out. Now you may make different choices in the future in relationships or friendships. You've learnt your lesson. That's okay. But it is as it needs to be. So move forward now. <laughs> I'd love to share a great example of that. I had a job which was seriously the worst job I'd ever had in my life when I moved here to North Carolina. But my first thought was like, all right, well, you attracted this. So what's up with you? And I was like, okay, you have an opportunity. To, apparently, you need to clear some deep stuff. So take this opportunity to clear some deep stuff. So I worked on myself. And then the other thought I had was, it can't be any worse than this. So what's my next step going to be? And then I ended up starting my own business. Now, if I hadn't had that experience, I mean, it was so bad. I, I was like, it can't get any worse than this. And that yeah. gave me the motivation to do that. I don't think I would have been brave enough to start my own business had that not happened. That's exactly it. You know, when we say things like it can't get really worse, etc., etc., that's a good way of detaching from something and letting go of the attachment to it, um, and letting go of. Otherwise, you know, you could have carried this on and said, "I feel so terrible. I feel so angry. Why did I go through that? Why me? What's wrong with me?" But instead, it's like, okay, it, you know, it can't get any worse. What can I do instead? What What do I want to create instead? Basically. Also, um, in line with what you said there about moving to a place and uh, and creating something, it's like sometimes people will go through stuff. They'll they'll go through a job and they'll move on to another job, but the same conditions will re resurface and they'll move to another job and so on. Or they'll come from a relationship and move to another relationship. And so, what's the common denominator here? You know, there's a saying: you know, wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> Right, I think that that's so true. And I want you to tell people about your website and all your good stuff. But is there anything else that you're like, oh my gosh, this is a really important point or a question you haven't asked that you'd like everyone to know? 
I think we've covered a lot of it. I think I think we've covered a lot of stuff to make people think. And if you want to find out more, um, I've got a blog at www.manifestingandlawofattraction.com. That's manifesting a n d lawofattraction.com. There's also a website at www.hemelradia.com. That's h e m a l r a d i a dot com. Uh, lots of downloads. You can download sample chapters to my book. Uh, I run a weekly uh, program. Uh, uh, a call and an audio you can download called Manifesting Excellence. You can find out more about that. I also work one to one with people, so check it out. And you can find out there's lots of there's about 300 over 300 blog posts on on, on the blog itself. So there's lots of resources, free information as well. So feel free to check it out. And do you have some books that you can tell people what those are? Yeah, it's my my book, Find You When You Find Everything: The Secrets to the Law of Attraction. So that's it. It's on Amazon. It's everywhere. You can get it on Kindle. Um, you can even get sample chapters and you can you can have it in 10 minutes from now it's, it's definitely worth a read that's that's the feedback i constantly get this is the book to read on this subject basically so it's easy to read it's enjoyable um, when when people read it they find themselves getting more and more connected and that's how i've written this where people can enjoy this it's easy to read um, and as you read it you find yourself sort of transforming and getting more and more aligned to 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 who you are as well well i have to say i have had so many aha moments you have you were true to the advertisement. You have completely <laughs> given me a new way to look at things. I love it. I think that, you know, I do this series because I believe clutter gets us stuck and we all are unique and have our gifts to share and I want people out there sharing their gifts instead of going from job to job and having the same old thing happen. So this has just given me a whole complete uh, new outlook and I'm so excited with everything that I've learned today. Thank you, Jill. It's been great. I've just loved the interaction, all that we've been sharing. It's been great fun. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share as well. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. You can find out more about Julie Caraccio and her services at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. We'll see you here next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.